This video will define and explain the concept of income elasticity of demand. It will demonstrate how to calculate income elasticity of demand, explain the range of values of income elasticity of demand, and then discuss its applications um, for producers and for the economy. So what is income elasticity of demand? Basically, income elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of demand to changes in income. So how sensitive is the demand for a specific product to a change in the income of consumers? This is what income elasticity of demand is all about. How do we measure income elasticity of demand? We use this formula. YED, which is um, the symbol for income elasticity of demand, is equal to percentage change in the quantity demanded over percentage change in income. So the top part of this equation we measure using this formula. Uh, the change in the quantity demanded, so QD2 minus QD1 divided by QD1 times 100. The bottom part of this equation we measure using this formula, which is the percentage change in income. We take Y2, the new income, minus Y1 divided by y1 times 100. So here's a numerical example. Assume, for example, when a consumer's income increased from $50,000 to $55,000 per year, this consumer's demand for cinema tickets increased from 20 to 25 tickets per year. So how do we calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded? Well, basically, we take the new quantity, which is 25, minus the old quantity, which is 20, so 25 minus 20, divided by 20 times 100. So you see that there has been a plus 25% change, which means there has been an increase in the demand by 25%. The percentage change in income is calculated by getting the new income minus the old income, divided by the old income times 100. So the new income is 55,000 minus 50,000, divided by 50,000 times 100, which gives us plus 10%. This means that income has risen by 10%. If you take the plus 25 and you divide it by the plus 10, which is um, the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in income, this will give you an income elasticity of demand of positive 2.5. So this is a numerical example of how to calculate income elasticity of demand. Basically, this income elasticity of demand value that we just um, calculated, that positive 25, what it means is that for every 1% increase in income, demand will increase by 2.5%. The same, if income drops by 1%, demand will decrease by 2.5%. That's what this value actually means. So just like cross-price elasticity of demand, the um, value, the sign of income elasticity of demand is important. If the income elasticity of demand that you calculated gives you a positive value, this means that this product, this good, is a normal good. A normal good basically means that when income increases, demand will increase. And when income decreases, demand will decrease. So the income and the demand for normal goods, they move in the same direction. When one increases, the other increases. When one decreases, the other decreases. If you calculate an income elasticity of demand and it gives you a negative value, here we say that this is actually an inferior good. An inferior good is a good that you buy less of when your income rises. So when income increases, demand decreases, and you buy more of when your income falls. When income falls, demand increases. A very good example is public transport. Um, the poorer people are, the more likely they are to rely on public transport. And um, the richer a person becomes, supposedly, this might be changing nowadays with all this green um, environmentalist uh, attitudes, but um, supposedly when, when people have higher incomes, they go and they buy cars. They demand less public transport. So remember, a positive income elasticity of demand means that this good is a normal good. A negative income elasticity of demand means that this good is an inferior good. 
So let's take a look at normal goods. Remember, normal goods are the products whose income elasticity of demand is a positive value, and inferior goods are when the income elasticity of demand is negative. So let's take a look at normal goods. If the um, absolute value of income elasticity of demand is greater than 1, we say that this product has income elastic demand. And usually this is the case for luxury goods, goods that are quite luxurious. Basically what this means is that the percentage change in demand will be greater than the percentage change in income. In the example that I gave earlier with cinema tickets, um, in this example for this consumer, cinema tickets are a luxury good because the income elasticity of demand was plus 2.5 and it was greater than 1. Now, if the absolute value of income elasticity of demand is less than 1, which means that this product has income inelastic demand, this means that it is a necessity, a necessary good. For a necessary good, the percentage change in demand will always be less than the percentage change in income. And this makes sense. If a good is a necessity, then we probably will prioritize buying that good uh, when we have a low income. So when our income rises, we might not necessarily go and buy more um, of that good than what the income has risen by. So remember, um, positive value means it's a normal good. Negative value means it's an inferior good. If the value is positive, we look at the absolute value. If it's greater than one, that means it's a luxury good and the percentage change in demand will be greater than the percentage change in income. If it's less than one, we say that this is a necess necess ne oh, necessity good or a necessary good where the percentage change in demand will be less than the percentage change in income. So what are some of the applications or the implications of income elasticity of demand? Uh, basically, let's look at three types of products. Um, we know that every economy has a primary sector which produces primary products like agricultural products and fishing and forestry, a secondary sector which produces manufactured products, and a tertiary sector which produces services. Basically, primary products often have a very low, relatively low income elasticity of demand. Manufactured products will have a slightly higher income elasticity of demand, services will often have the highest income elasticity of demand in an economy. And the implications of this are as such. As an economy grows and develops, which means that people's income levels rise. So as an economy gets richer, the demand for services will increase at the fastest rate. Okay? While the demand for manufactured products will increase at a slower rate than the demand for services, and the demand for primary products will increase at the slowest rate. In fact, sometimes it might even decrease. Basically, the main idea is that as people get richer, they demand more and more services than they do um, products from the other sectors of the economy. And this is something we observe in all economies as they have developed and have grown richer. We see that the demand for services has grown at a much higher proportion than the rise in income. Um, so this is one of the main um, implications for producers of primary products and manufactured products as well as the producers of services, and also for the economy as a whole.